All right, um, so good morning, everyone. Um, so welcome to today's session, uh, which is dubbed uh, the KPMG Global Cyber Day. Um, and the agenda for today basically is to raise awareness and to be able just to talk through some very important aspects um, on how to keep ourselves um, secure uh, while interacting with technology. Uh, we all know that cybersecurity is um, concerns making sure that we observe, um, you know, cyber um, safe um, and, you know, having a, the awareness to be able to interact with computers safely. So what we're going to discuss today is pretty much going to be around that. My name is Anthony Muyoro. Um, I'm an associate director at KPMG and I lead the cybersecurity practice. And I'm here with my colleagues who are also going to introduce themselves. So allow me to first of all, welcome each and every one of you um, to this very, very good and insightful session that we have prepared for you. Um, October is normally the global um, cybersecurity awareness month. So what we endeavor to do um, within the month of October is to pretty much disseminate information that will help um, people, um, um, children and also adults on how to maintain good cyber behaviors, which we can also call cyber hygiene. Um, so mine is to welcome you all and hope that we'll be able just to engage meaningfully. Um, so allow me just to go through a few housekeeping rules. Um, we kindly request that we keep, um, uh, of course, try and um, um, keep our mics muted. Um, I know we've all, we've disabled that feature for now. But then of course, if you have any question that you'd want to ask us, there is a chat feature and there is a Q and A feature um, 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 in, in, your, in your Zoom um, um, dashboard. Please uh, type in the question that you'd want us to respond to, and we will endeavor to do that um, either in the course of the presentation or afterwards. Um, if you have any concern, please let us know uh, because we are keen just to uh, be able to make this very interactive um, so that we pretty much touch on each and every aspect that would be important to you. So. Without further ado, allow me now to move on to the next um, 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 segment of this presentation. And pretty much we're just going to cover the program and just to take you through in terms of what we have planned for you today. So in this session, what we're gonna talk about is um, first of all, we will discuss uh, protecting your identity online. Next slide, please, Henry. Um, and pretty much this is how do you protect your individual identities, because that is the identifier that ideally identifies your sessions um, and how you interact. You obviously have a password uh, to either your device, be it an iPad, be it a tablet, be it a laptop, and even a mobile device. Um, so how then do you protect such? It might also be like your email address or any other digital identity that you may have. Um, it can even be a um, social media account. So how do you protect it? It's very, very important that we have that level of awareness. The second thing would be on secure login and logout. How do you do this in a secure manner? What are some of the best ways of logging in um, and logging out um, from your devices or even some of these accounts. And then we'll also talk about online content and screen time advice. We'll touch on aspects, particularly some of the apps that are largely used uh, by children, such as YouTube, yeah? What are some of those controls that we need to um, uh, pretty much have visibility on? And how then are we able to, um, to make sure that um, you know, we maintain a healthy balance, particularly when we talk about the screen time that we give access to our children, right? Because we need to protect our children from some of these um, uh, applications and some of this content that might be harmful. Because of course, uh, we're all aware that not everything that is out there is beneficial to um, our young ones. And then of course, we'll talk about the safe use of social media. 
Social media is an effective tool. It's a good tool for connection, for communication, and even basically being in this digital age, um, it's, it's really defined the social strata as we know it today. But then of course, what are some of the safety nets and the guardrails that we need to have in place when our children are interacting with social media? So what should you do um, as a user? Um, particularly your friends are online um, and you know you really also want to connect to them. So what is the safety um, best practice in terms of engaging with it? And then we'll also talk about cyberbullying. What is it uh, and why is this important? And what are some of the ways that you can protect yourself? And what should you do, particularly when you have instances where um, you have noted some of these um, attempts or even um, actual um, occurrences where you might feel like you um, being bullied um, in that cyberspace? How should you handle such an incident? How should you be able to respond to such? And then we'll also look at using smartphones. <laughs> and using phones smartly, um, and what is the best way to use them? What should be the do's and don'ts? What should be the things that you ideally need to um, um, be able to know so that your interactions with your phones and your gadgets is ideally compliant to some of the best practices and that you're doing the right things? And then, of course, we'll talk about online gaming. I love gaming. I'm a gamer myself. So, but when we talk about online gaming, what are some of the things that you also need to be cognizant about so that you don't get played? Uh, what are the perils and what are some of those issues and risks? Because there are a lot of bad people out there. So how do you protect yourself when you're playing um, your video games um, and you know, you're know you obviously even connected online, um, are competing against other people across the world? It's not a bad thing. But then of course, um, how do you ensure that um, you do this in a good and in a, in, a, in, in a well done manner so that it does not expose you. Because like we said earlier on, um, some of the issues that we have here, we have bad people online. So you need to know that um, there are risks and there are people that ideally may want to do the wrong things so that you're aware. And then the last one, we'll also talk about um, cyber attacks and how to be aware of some of the different cyber attacks that we have. So now, again, um, should you have any questions, we want you to share these questions with us. Particularly, we want you to tell us, um, what do you want to learn yeah, about cyber safety today? And we want you to type in the chat box and tell us what your expectations are. What do you want to learn about cyber safety today? Um, what are some of the concerns that you may have? Maybe you saw something um, and you got concerned. Maybe um, something made you uncomfortable and you have questions. This is an open forum. And that is why we come in as experts so that we can help you. Yeah. So don't be scared of pointing it out. So let us know um, so that now we can be able also to share, um, you know, in the very best way possible. And then tell us if you have any questions about cyber safety. Um, and like I mentioned earlier on, we want you to enter these responses um, um, into the chat box, okay? So like I can see Alice is asking, how can you avoid being hacked? Yes, we will answer you um, in terms of, how to protect yourself and the things that you need to know um, so that you do not expose yourself. And then I can see Elizabeth asking how to avoid hackers in raw blocks. Very, very good question. Um, we'll also answer that um, so that we'll also give you that information. Fantastic. So, um, so please keep the questions coming and then we will revisit them as we proceed. Most of them, we will answer them as we go on. Uh, but then, of course, we'll be able even just to give you an opportunity to, um, to ask even follow-up questions on the same. All right. So I hope we are together up to that point. So let me see a thumbs up in the chat box. If, if, if we are together, let me see a thumbs up. I was told we have a very active audience today. So maybe throw in a thumbs up in the chat box. Excellent. I can see them coming in. I can see them coming in. Fantastic, fantastic. So we are together. So now um, to start us off, we are gonna talk about um, online, um, um, protecting your identity online. And why is this important? 
because your identity is pretty much the identifier. Um, so when you log into maybe, let's say, um, if it's social media, Facebook, yeah, your identity is what really distinguishes you, right? Um, if you have an email account, maybe for schoolwork, um, the, your school sends assignments to you through your email or um, maybe uh, other things that you may use it for. Of course, that email address is unique to you. Um, and there are also you know, rules in terms of how you should keep this secure. So here are some of the tips that will help you um, in terms of keeping your identity secure online. The first one, use a very strong password. Use a strong password. That is very important because your password should not be obvious. And you need to avoid things like your names, yeah? Like your second names. Like for me, I'm Anthony Muyoro. If I put my password as Anthony Muyoro, it's very easy for someone to guess. So you need to make it a bit hard, okay? Great. The second one is you also need to keep your online identity a secret, like your password. You should not tell people, all right? So that is very fundamental. Keep it a secret. It should not be... Um, accessible to everyone, okay? Are we together? And then the third one, we talk about, um, you know, before signing up, um, uh, make, making your identity unique. And what we mean by this is, let it be very distinctive so that um, whenever you are creating um, your, you know, like it's a profile, it's an email address, it has to be unique. And even your password, it has to be very unique. Like I said earlier, do not use things that are very obvious, like your name and maybe date of birth. Yeah, that is something that someone can easily guess. So we have to try and make it a bit complicated so that somebody cannot guess your password. If you make it too easy and predictable, someone then can hack your um, account and then they can gain access to your devices or to your, um, you know, like if it's an email address or even if it's a social media account. So make it very unique. The other one is before signing up, you need to consult a trusted adult. Like I mentioned earlier, there are very bad people out there and some of them harvest information from young ones, yeah? And this is very predatory in nature. So you need to consult and have um, an adult, either your parent, your guardian, um, someone or even your teacher just to be able to advise you if that is um, um, something that should proceed. If it's an account, maybe it's a page, you want to create your own profile, um, they should be able to advise you so that you don't end up in a scenario where this ideally is not um, a good site that you're signing up on. And then the other one is always enable security settings. And this normally happens in two ways. You find if you have a mobile device or even a computer, they have security settings. So never be um, you know, convinced by someone to switch them off, right? And even if it's some of, like if it's an email address um, or, an, or, or a social media or even a gaming platform, yeah? They're normally default security settings that have been built to ensure that security is maintained. When you deactivate it, um, then of course you pretty much, um, you know, pretty much you run the risk of uh, people, you know, bypassing some of those settings and compromising your identity. So never ever disable them. So you need to make sure that they're enabled um, full time. The other one is to always lock your computer when you're away. For instance, if you're in school and maybe you're using a shared computer. Um, immediately you're done. You need to ensure that first of all, you sign out, yeah? That is very important. But then if you're at home and you're also using your device and you're stepping away, if, or even if you have your laptop, for instance, in school as well, you need to ensure that you sign off or you lock your computer. Particularly if the device belongs to you, then you need to lock it so that no one can access it. Um, um, because of course it's unique to you and you're the one who has um, um, the password to that device. So that is extremely important. For instance, you have your iPad or your tablet um, or even your mobile device. Ensure that you always lock it. 
if this is even a laptop um, and you're doing some homework or you're doing something, an assignment or whatever the case may be, yeah? Good computer safety practice is to always ensure that you never ever leave your device unmanned and um, unlocked, yeah? Under any circumstance. So you need to ensure that that happens. And it's a very simple thing. Um, if you're using a laptop or a computer, it's just like even Windows and L. So that is the Windows, the Windows um, button and L. And that will help you do it in a very fast way, all right? The other one is to always keep your software and programs um, updated. And this is pretty much ensuring that you're running um, um, you know, updated software. A good trick is to always ensure that you have or rather you're switching off and rebooting your machines so that um, all these updates um, update automatically, all right? Great. So that is on protecting yourself online. Now, on to the next one, which we are gonna talk about secure logging and logout. And what do we mean by this? How do you log in um, and log out from your devices um, in a secure manner? So now, when we talk about this, the things that you need to always avoid when logging in and even creating your usernames and profiles is avoid your full name, yeah? Do not use your full name, particularly when we're talking about um, 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 using your, your, your screen name. You should also avoid things um, such as your age, address or DOB, and even gender. Why is this so? Because you want to also make it less obvious. Um, 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 you know, when, when we talk about creating a unique identity, particularly when it comes to your password, and that is extremely important. So we always recommend, particularly for your passwords, you choose parameters that may not be easily guessable, yeah? Um, so it can be a combination of statements that is hard, but also including things such as alphanumeric, maybe numbers, and so on and so forth. So how do you then create a um, strong password? You need to have a combination of phrases. You need to also have symbols and even numbers that someone cannot easily guess because people will also use tools that um, when we talk about um, you know, cracking passwords, that can also be used. And then of course, the password should be long enough. So minimum best practice is eight characters of length. And then of course, you need to have a combination of uppercase as well as lowercase, right? And I know this is not, um, it's not complicated as it seems, but it's a question of making your passwords not easily guessable so that someone cannot crack your password, okay? Great. So now we'll, we'll tell you an example of a fairly complex password. Like you can see, the Mary that we have here, the A is actually not an A, it's an at, right? And um, when you talk about the, the, the L, we have put an exclamation mark. And then of course, we've tried to do that across. And then you'll see the length of that password is quite long. And it's actually even more than eight password, um, eight characters. So this is an example of a fairly complex password. It's very hard for any hacker to crack this password. In fact, um, um, even an automated machine um, will not be able to crack this because it has that combination of, you can see it has an uppercase letter, it has a symbol, it has a special character, and it also has a number, yeah? And a lowercase. So that makes it fairly complex. And that is the rule of thumb. And what we want to tell you, particularly on identity, that is what you need to do. So never write down your passwords. Always ensure that your password, memorize it. Do not write it down on your notebook and then you leave your notebook next to your laptop. Um, you know, someone can get into your notebook and get your password. So never write them down, yeah? Um, number two, you need to also explore using multi-factor authentication. And most of this platform, like I'll give you an example, applications like Facebook, Gmail, and all these leading um, applications ideally um, have automated this feature. So in their app, they will tell you that we have multi-factor authentication that you can use. The other one that you also need to know is um, when we talk about um, 
good password safety is never ever share your passwords. Again, remember that's why it's a secret because it's supposed to be unique to you. You might share it with your best friend and then your best friend shares it, shares it with someone else and then that someone shares it with the wrong person. And then that person hijacks your account. And then they start doing funny things. Most of the time, the people, and this is from research, the people who normally end up being cyber bullied and when people talk about, um, no, 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 no cyber bullied, um, stolen identities, someone um, gets your Facebook account and starts posting funny things, most of the time when we do some of those investigations, we normally find out that um, they actually shared their password with someone and then that someone shared it with someone else or was reckless about it. So never share your passwords with anyone. So it should be unique to you. And then of course, always change your password frequently. Yeah, um, ideally that should be, your password should not go beyond like two months or so, best practice. Maximum 90 days, which is three months, but change it when prompted. And most of these, um, even applications ideally would prompt you to do that. But it's always a good habit. If you can, do it monthly. If you can, do it after two months. If you can, maximum, do it after 90 days. Yeah, so that your password is not going to be too obvious. Because sometimes you find that um, even some of those applications we use can be you know, data can be leaked or they can also be hacked. So there's always that possibility. So always ensure that you change your passwords. Now, <laughs> when logging out, you should always ensure that you log out from all the accounts. And when we talk about logging out is making sure, like I mentioned earlier on, when you're not using your machine, when you're not using your account, please log out. Please do not leave an active session. Please, even if it's at home, ensure that you log out or you lock your machine. So when you do this, it minimizes your chances of having your account being stolen. So lock it. And then, of course, if you can, avoid using free Wi-Fi because this is normally a hotspot uh, for hackers. People can steal your data. People can do what we call money in the middle when you're connecting maybe to Google, someone is also siphoning and, and be uh, able to intercept and uh, be able to read into that um, internet transaction. So if you can avoid using Wi-Fi that is free, uh, please do so. Now, um, I'll invite now my colleague to take us through the online content um, so that um, we can also get to understand more about that. Over to you. Henry? All right. Okay. Uh, I think yeah, Henry, over be... to you. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Anthony, um, for the good introduction in terms of ensuring that our attendees can learn how to create strong passwords. So the next item that we're going to be looking at is going to be relating to online content. <clears throat> and when we're talking about content online, we're going to be basically looking at how do you interact with the various uh, components when you're either connecting using the, the computers at home, your mobile phones, tablets, and any other devices perhaps that you normally interact with to let's say do your school activities and also assignments. So the other item is going to be looking at uh, signing up on sites. So Anthony has just mentioned and built upon the fact that when you're creating an identity online, you're not supposed to use information that is very easy to guess about you. So for example, when you're creating, let's say a profile, you you do not register let's say on a gaming platform using your your real name you can create a, a pseudonym that can actually allow you to you know utilize interact with the environment without revealing too much about you you as a person the other item is to watch out for fake news and again we're going to be looking at that a little bit more in depth how to be able to find out what is fake news what is not 
and what are the repercussions in terms of what would happen if you fell for this kind of uh, bait. The other is how to stay focused when you're keeping yourself, uh, you know, when you're interacting with various um, systems online and also platforms, which can include social media. The other item is actually in terms of I think my screen is closing, just try to share it. Uh, maybe Anthony, you can answer a few questions as I try to bring up the presentation again. On the okay, screen. sure. Um, so I've seen a few questions. Um, the first one from Elizabeth Derito. How do you turn on camera? Okay, um, I'll tell you. One of the things, um, turning on a camera is, um, is um, quite straightforward. But I think the other thing that I may want to mention is for privacy purposes, it's always advisable, particularly the webcam, um, always ensure that it's sealed even when you, um, you know, when the machine is not being used. Why do I say that? We've had instances of where people hack into laptops and then they activate the webcam and they now monitor, um, you know, the environment using the same, yeah? Um, it's a fairly easy thing. We can also do that because some of the simulations we do for our clients, we normally uh, show them how that can be done. Um, so we recommend to always ensure that that is sealed. But turning on a camera, I believe it's fairly easy, fairly straightforward. If it's a webcam, like what we're using right now, that should be straightforward. How to identify scammers? Um, the second question, I will tell you this. If it doesn't look right, if they're asking for money or information and they're not supposed to be asking for it, if you see emails or other communication that they're asking for things urgently yeah. they can do things, or even posing to be people, you know, um, some can even come pretending maybe they're your parents or your yeah. uncle. So you need to be very suspicious. So always consult with your guardian or an adult when you receive such messages. Do not respond. Um, but And we've had this particularly with children where they are being asked for pictures by strangers, yeah? So let's also be very careful about that. Anyone asking you for such information is definitely not legit. So you need to be able to um, um, identify or rather even raise that issue with your guardian or your parent um, so that appropriate action can be taken, yeah? Um, there's another question on how to monitor and manage access to the internet on gadgets and home Wi-Fi. There are very many tools for that. Um, so what we can do is um, we'll just, uh, we'll, we'll, we, we will type in a few tools that you can consider for that. So Henry, um, I think now you can proceed. The screen is back up. Um, Henry or Payne, um, so yeah. All right, I think. I can I can I can resume. <clears throat> okay, is the presentation still up on the screen? Yes, it is. Okay, thank you. So, as I was mentioning, when we're looking at keeping your your con your your identity online secure, we're going to be looking at things. That, uh, one we had mentioned about how do you connect to these sites. Um, how you sign up on these sites, watching out for fake news, staying focused. The fifth item that we're going to be looking at is watching what you download. So when you're talking about what are you downloading, um, are you downloading these particular games, um, content from, from legitimate sites? It's something that also enables users um, 
protect themselves in terms of not getting viruses installed on their computers and also their, their other devices. The next item is going to be on finding out scams, how to differentiate a scam, what is a scam in this case. So a scam can be you're browsing, um, let's say, a social media platform and someone tells you that you have just won an iPhone and yet you know for sure that you have not even registered or participated in any game or activity that the end result was for you to win an iPhone Pro Max 13 or something. So that is something that you also need to take into account. And then the seventh item in terms of watching um, how you keep safe is always ask an adult. And this, the reason for this is that you might not be aware of some, some pitfalls that might be ahead of you in terms of what will happen if you download, let's say, that movie from that particular site and what will be the repercussion. So always ask if you're in doubt. And as Anthony has mentioned, if it looks fishy, always consult and it will allow you to be able to keep yourself safe. So we can move on into the next slide, which in this case talks about, um, it talks about fake news. So when we're talking about fake news, we're talking about someone trying to present information in a way that is very believable, very enticing, but the end result is that it aims to, to induce a particular kind of um, outcome. It will be, let's say, perpetuating uh, or propagating false information. And when you're talking about false information, it can mean that either someone is trying to uh, present information that is a lie, an outright lie. And a good example would be probably during the, the COVID uh, lockdown period. There were so many uh, false narratives about what, what would happen, what actually propagates the virus, what makes it spread so quickly. And also fake sites came up as a result of having all this information and people were not able to ad accurately know that this information is false while this other information is actually legitimate. And that's why the government um, through the TV and, so, and media was telling people if you're in doubt, go and check, let's say the government of Kenya, uh, the health uh, ministry portal, where you can actually get the correct information. So when this fake news is actually being propagated on this site, when people click on it, that is how they get hacked because you're either going to be told in order to, to see the full information, you need to register an account. And again, as Anthony had mentioned, just to build it upon it, is that when you create this account, you're perhaps entering your, your, your full name, your password. And again, if someone is creative enough, they can actually attempt to uh, log in into other accounts with the name that you have created, assuming that it was the same name and be able to compromise your, your identity. So that's another key component. So I think they can move to the next slide. So when you're doing, when you're, when you're browsing online, the item highlighted in red, uh, and again, not going into so much details about it, but basically when you, when you go to, let's say Twitter or Facebook or Instagram or any other uh, social media platform that you use, you'll always notice that there is that padlock um, icon that is attached, that is always present on this particular um, website. So that padlock, what it means is that that particular website, if it's, if it's Facebook or Twitter or any other site that you interact with, in this case, means that it's secured. So what does that secured mean? It means that if you enter your username and password on that particular portal, it is actually being passed on to the to the to the to the back end computers that will actually now give you the information about where what your profile is and if they are wrong then it is going to tell you that the information is not accurate so when it has that padlock it means that the information is not being sent in clear text so clear text is what we can actually see on the screen an example of clear text is when you look at the, let's say twitter.net, that is clear text. But when you'll have the padlock, it means that this particular information is going to be um, 
permutated and changed in a way that you will not even know that it is twitter.net that is actually on that particular uh, address. It's going to be changed and it's one of the ways in which websites aim to make you secure. So always make sure that if you're visiting the site, it has that particular icon. Now the next component is the safe use of social media. And with safe use, it's always advisable to pause before you post. And the pause in this case is necessarily like trying to think through. Yes, you might be attending, a, let's say a family event and you have some photos that you would like to post to social media. There is nothing wrong with that. But in this case, what some of the things that you can actually aim to ensure that you do not expose yourself is that you do not post, uh, you know, like uh, personally identifiable information about you. For example, you do not post things about your password. That is why one of the ways in which you can keep your password secure is to keep it secret. The next item is to not post something that someone can be able to create a profile off of that. So for example, by using your full, your full names and date of birth, they can also be able to create another profile, a fake profile that mimics your own. And then someone says, but you know, I have this profile that is doing everything that I am doing. It's because maybe you have revealed a little bit too much. So review your privacy settings often. Why we review them is to ensure that you're not exposing too much information. So sometimes, uh, Maybe if you, if you have never visited this icon, it is worth checking on it. It's usually under the settings. And you will notice that one of the ways in which your privacy can be exposed is that your name can be easily searchable through search engines. So when search engines are doing their indexing of web pages, because usually websites are just pages stored on different computers on the internet. So when uh, search engines are, are crawling the internet, your profile can always be pulled because perhaps the settings that you had placed in, in your social media uh, profile allow it to be easily picked up by search engines. So it's something that you can go to the settings and remove. And then the other thing is that you can also reduce in terms of the exposure. So what do you want your profile to see when it's being viewed publicly? Perhaps you only just want uh, you know, like your name, your profile name to be visible and nothing else. That is something you can also consider. Um, Two-factor authentication is when you have your username and password. Once you enter those and it's correct, then it normally sends you a message, let's say on your registered mobile phone, and then you enter that key, that key or passcode into the, the page where you're supposed to log in, and then it now allows you to see the backend. So the reason as to why it's always advisable to use this particular step in keeping your online safety is to ensure that even if your password was lost or stolen in one way or another, you can be able to have that extra level of comfort knowing that you have an extra layer of security. The fourth item is in related to number two, it's do not overshare information about yourself. Always try to keep things um, you know, very minimalistic as possible. And the same principles apply also in the real world. If let's say you meeting very new people for the first time, it's not, it's not ideally that you would go and share everything about you, tell them where you live, what you like to do for the, you know, for the weekend or any other thing. You only just share what is, what is public knowledge. For example, you can say, oh, I like this particular kind of um, food, but you do not, go into so much detail that someone can actually be able to entice you and derive more information from you. Something that is very, very personal. And then number five is to be careful with what you click. And again, this relates to fake news. So if someone was posting something, let's say uh, your friend uh, sent you a, a link on, on let's say WhatsApp or any other platform, and this particular link says that you, you, you know, you're going to be able to, to win a particular phone if you, if let's say you, you click or send it to five friends. Again, how, 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 how real is it that you're actually going to win a phone by sending 
you know, clicking the link and sending it to five, uh, five people. It's not really, you know, you always have to be careful in terms of what you click. All right. So now um, the final item on this particular component is to ensure that, again, you, you only uh, relate to, you, to your friends. Do not connect with strangers online. And again, that's just one of the components. So So respect people's privacy, don't bully, um, keep your information private and always ask for help. So I think in that particular regard, we're going to be, we'll just touch upon uh, being aware of open profiles. So again, always connect with, with people you know. Uh, do not connect with people you don't know. If someone sends you a profile and it says that this person is linked to your friend, confirm with your friend that they know this particular person. If not, do not do, do, not do that. Do not connect, just to be uh, secure. Avoid leaving your profile open. Like I mentioned, such changes can, can be easily, can easily search your, your profile and pull the information to the internet. And when you're live streaming, always ensure that you're streaming from the correct sites and using the, the correct legitimate ways. So when it comes to posting pictures or anything in terms of personal information, uh, make sure that you request for permission because some of these in photos can actually be used to create fake profiles. So you might have, again, as I had mentioned, a profile that looks exactly the, like yours, but its main aim is probably to defame you because someone is just creating a profile based off the information you've given, and then they can be able to do malicious things. So do not post things about where you live, where you go to school, always keep things very minimalistic or even uh, don't post it at all. So the last part is going to be in terms of uh, talking about internet trolls. So trolls are the people who who are just mean on the internet. There are people who are mean in the real world, but we also have mean people on, on the internet. And these people meant to, you know, like stir up anger, cause chaos. And the best thing to deal with them is that first of all, you do not respond. So if someone starts becoming an internet troll, you will be able to quickly identify them because they, they pick the most provocative topics and make sure that people are trying to respond. So always do not respond because not responding, um, you know, kills the appetite of the troll. Uh, you, you can also block the particular person or profile in this case and ensure that this person will not be able to, to do malicious things. Um, don't post that someone is actually trolling you because that will give them fuel to know that you're actually uh, interacting with them. Um, screenshot interactions, avoid that. And again, you can also report this particular profile that is let's say trying to cause harm to either the platform uh, security team so that they can inv investigate um, that particular profile and deactivate it or send a warning. Um, the other last part is to change the account settings. And again, it relates to making sure that the information is kept as minimalistic and private as possible. And then finally, always tell an adult, do not, do not uh, interact with strangers online. Um, or if something like this is, is happening, if, an, if a troll is trying to reach out to you or trying to defame you, tell a trusted adult and they will advise you further in terms of what you can do. So the, la uh, the other part is, is on online grooming. So online grooming is when uh, an adult builds a relationship with the aim of building trust with a young person who is usually very younger than them. And the main advantage is to either cause harm. So this is how you find that people have been kidnapped or something bad has happened. And it's always best to avoid such scenarios. So one is that never accept uh, you know, a request from a stranger. The same way you will not interact with strangers physically, then it's the same way you treat people online because it's still a virtual space, but you know, there are still physical people behind the scenes. So always do never, never interact with, with such people online. So that's in terms of online grooming. And always 
report suspicious behavior to a trusted adult. So this can be your guardian, your parent, an elder sibling, um, you know, close family member, your teachers. Make sure that you, you, you tell a trusted adult that, you know, some, someone is doing something fishy and you block further contact from them. So make sure that you, you do that. Um, so never only engage online with people you actually know. So for example, if you, you're close with your friends in school, then you can only connect with them. But if you receive uh, requests from people that you do not even know in, in real life, then do not, do not uh, connect with them. So again, trust your instincts. If something feels odd or strange, then it probably is, and then block further contact. And then finally, you can always check your settings. All right, so there's a knowledge check there. Uh, you can type a yes or a no. So a stranger you don't recognize on social media asks you for your address. Do you give them your personal contact details? So taking the information that we have just gone through the previous uh, slide, maybe um, you can type your yes or no answer. So just check on the, you can type them on the chat box. And then I think once we have a few responses, I think we can be able to proceed. Okay. All right, I can see some answers. Yes, that's true. So th similarly, as we had spoken um, in terms of if you do not interact with people physically and you don't know them, then it's always advisable to steer away from them. So I think we can move on to the next slide. Yeah, so that's good. It shows that from the poll that we're in agreement that if a stranger you don't recognize asks you, the correct answer is no. Yeah, so that's good. So never give out your personal information. Thank you All so right, much, so... Henry. <clears throat> I think it's very encouraging to see 100% um, of us choosing um, the right answer. So my name is Payne, and I'm going to take you over uh, the next phase of this presentation, which is going to cover uh, an issue that I think is very close to a lot of our hearts, and that is bullying. So it's important for us to be friends uh, and not a bully. And we need to understand that bullying now takes various forms and shapes. It's not just physical anymore. With uh, the internet being used across the world and it being such an integral part of our lives now, uh, it has moved on to the cyberspace. So cyberbullying is when someone threatens or insults you or spreads gossip about you on social media, in emails, or even text messages. Some of us have been in a situation where you're being cyberbullied and you're not sure what to do. And this is something that happens to pretty much anyone who is on the internet and finds themselves in an uncomfortable situation. So what you need to remember if you ever get cyberbullied is that one, don't respond, two, tell a trusted adult, and block the bully, and finally, maintain your privacy. We have gone over several sections over the course of this session where we have discussed some of the ways of maintaining our privacy. And an additional step is being able to block people who are having very unpleasant interactions with you. You do not have to stay there. This is probably the only thing that makes um, uh, cyberbullying uh, something that you can try to deal with instantaneously by trying to block interactions with the individuals that might be causing you harm on the internet. Now, we have to understand that cyberbullying isn't just about being a victim or being on the other end. 
sometimes these are things that can happen around us to some of our friends, some of our people who, some of the people we um, are in contact with, or sometimes a stranger who you do not have any sort of relationship with. However, there's different ways for us to be able to help people who are being cyberbullied and to show support. So we have to be an upstander, to be someone who speaks out when something wrong is happening so that we are not being quiet when someone is actually going through a difficult time. Sometimes speaking up on behalf of someone can make the difference between being cyberbullied and them being left alone. We also need to report it. This is a feature that exists now on a lot of social media profiles, social media platforms, sorry, as well as other cyberspaces on the internet. Please be willing to report any instances of cyberbullying because now this brings it to the attention of the community managers for whatever platform you're on and they are able to block and sometimes even remove their accounts from that platform. Don't participate. This is probably the biggest point for this um, conversation we're having. Please do not participate in cyberbullying. It might seem like um, it is harmless because it's not physical. It might seem that <clears throat> you're just having a good laugh at the expense of someone. But please remember, if the fun is being um, created at the expense of someone else's well-being, someone else's feelings, then that's probably not the best thing to do. So please keep in mind that we should never participate in cyberbullying, no matter how funny or insensitive the situation might mean. One of the biggest misconceptions about cyberbullying is that it's not as um, painful or as impactful, or that it doesn't hurt as much simply because it's not happening physically. And we need to understand that that is not true. Sometimes this can lead to instances of uh, severe mental um, health issues. And in some cases, we have had children who have even killed themselves because of being driven to a point where they just don't feel welcome anymore and they do not feel like they can stand um, the torture of being cyberbullied. So let's take care of each other and let's not participate in cyberbullying. So we have a knowledge check here. The question is, kids in your class are group texting hurtful comments about someone else. You're in the group and you're receiving those messages. What do you do? A, join in the conversation. B, ignore the messages and delete them. C, do not reply, but save the messages and inform us the note. What do you think the right thing to do is? <clears throat> Let's keep responding. Let's get more people to answer the questions. There we go. 50% have answered. <clears throat> Fifty-seven percent. Okay, so I think we can stop at um, one minute. Okay, there we go. Okay, so most people have responded saying you join uh you do not reply but save the messages and inform the trusted adult some have said ignore the messages and delete them and then one person said join in on the conversation remember um by being part of the conversation it's very difficult for you to diffuse the situation and so that's probably not the best thing to do correct approach would be do not reply but save the messages and inform a trusted adult. If you ignore the messages, you are simply ignoring the person who is uh, the cause for these uh, hurtful conversations. And so nothing really is going to happen to them. When we are quiet, 
we're not having the kind of impact that we need to have because we're not creating a community where it is frowned upon for cyberbullying to take place. So the correct response would be don't reply, but save the messages and inform a trusted adult. So we have um, a section to do with using our smartphones and using our phones smartly at that. And there's a couple of tips that we always have to keep in mind when it comes to using our phone safely. The first one is set a password. The other is get permission to download. Three, only respond to numbers that you know. Be careful what you communicate. Ask before you take and share. Be mindful. Keep it safe. Keep phone up to date. Be careful with Bluetooth and connect carefully. We also have to make sure that we're asking for help the moment we are able to do so. So we've now moved into gaming online. <clears throat> And I believe a lot of us on the call um, have the tendency of uh, playing uh, during our spare time. And the reason why this is uh, a very important aspect for us is, as I mentioned, we've moved uh, a lot into the cyberspace. We're doing a lot of things on the internet. So for this session, I would like to invite Cynthia to proceed with what are some of the things that we need to watch out for when playing games online. Um, thank you, thank you, Payne, for that. Um, so I'll take you through the online gaming section. Uh, we all are aware about, um, in this day and age, uh, most of us, most of the kids and even adults, uh, this is how we uh, spend our free time. Um, so Payne, you can go to the next slide. Um, so, in online gaming, um, there are some factors um, that you need to uh, keep in mind to ensure that uh, <clears throat> you you're ensuring your personal safety and for those um, around you and your devices also. So uh, we advise not to use our personal usernames um, because, as we've been informed, uh, when when uh, interacting with people online, it is best to have very little information about yourself out there for your own safety so that you're also not identifiable and people cannot easily uh, take up, let's say your account or anything in any instance. And then now answering messages from strangers. Um, online gaming these days allows for communication, especially when you are uh, gaming with people who you do not know. So people might come to you asking for your address, asking uh, about more about yourself. Uh, let me get to know you. Where do you stay? Where do you come from? Such questions, um, you should question uh, such people because uh, they're going to get personal information from you and, and which might compromise you. We've had a, a lot of issues where uh, children are uh, are kidnapped or let's say picked up by people they consider online friends uh, from wherever they are. And it, it is not usually um, a, good, a good thing. And then now uh, for the streaming sites, we really need to pay attention. Uh, because most of the time when we are streaming, as we are gaming, uh, we are showing our our physical environment. Um, we are giving out information because most of the time there is interaction, we are talking. So we need to be mindful about what we are sharing online as we are participating in maybe the gaming contest, competitions with uh, people from all over the world. There are some things you need to ensure you're not putting out there. And also um, in terms of physical security, especially um, in, during COVID, uh, we realized um, I think it was seen that most of the people, most of the gaming people ended up being attacked because you see, you're sharing your physical environment, people can see your surroundings. And on top of it, um, Henry talked about uh, online presence. So what are you posting? People can see where you are and they can do like a one plus one thing. And uh, there are some cases where um, I witnessed people being attacked when they were streaming. 
as they were gaming, yeah? So you need to be cautious about that. And then now check before you download, there are a lot of pop-ups when we are, when we were playing these online games, yeah? Um, I don't know, you're going to win uh, a new iPhone, you're going to get a thousand dollars, whatnot. Most of these things are, are just a cover up, that's what I would say, uh, to introduce malicious uh, <clears throat> programs into your devices. So you're advised to not download just any random pop-ups that come to your screen. And if you really feel like you have to, uh, just consult an adult who is there with you. And then uh, I've already talked about don't answer personal questions because you're putting yourself in a compromising situation. And then the same for links and pop-ups. They will do the same uh, when it comes to uh, adding malicious programs to your devices, uh, which is not uh, something we want. And then beware of cyber bullies. Um, we are aware of in this day and age, there are a lot of cases of uh, sweating and doxing because for some reason, gaming is such a vengeful thing. Uh, people really take to heart their losses and their, and their wins. So people really want to intimidate each other. So it can be a bit extreme. So I'd advise I'd advice when gaming, you stick to either a crowd of people you know, and you you these games are supervised by an adult, or you become so anonymous that you're not identifiable to people uh, in such a way that uh, they cannot target you for cyberbullying mostly because you might be so good at something people might not want that. Yeah. So um, for pre prevention uh, of all these, uh, we will just take up the things uh, the previous panelists have, have mentioned. Uh, we're going to use strong passwords, uh, minimal information. Don't use your full name. Don't give people your real name. Use 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 a, a pseudonym. You don't have to use your real name on online gaming platforms. Um, choose who, be careful about who you're talking to and what information you're sharing with people out there. Um, yeah, and ensure put yourself first. Ensure that you're focusing on your own personal safety before anything. Do not just indulge in the fun and adrenaline of these gamings and forget that you're actually interacting with people on the other side of the computer who can be actually bad people or good people, depending on who you're interacting with. Yeah, and also ensure that the games that you're playing are approved by an adult. Yeah, yeah, that is also important. Um, next slide, please. Yeah, so uh, this is an example of a pop-up. So uh, it could be anything. It could be something uh, that will make you want to click on it or something as plain as, do you want to close this program? So you do not want to press yes, no, or cancel. You'd have to click the X button just for safety. Um, you, it is the best. It is the best way to actually close pop-ups. I uh, do not interact with the pop-up in any way. Just close it uh, using the X button. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, so we have um, a knowledge a knowledge check uh, where it asks, "You are playing a game online. Suddenly, you get a pop-up message." The message reads, congratulations, you've been randomly selected to win a brand new iPhone 14 Pro Max. What are you supposed to do? Are you supposed to ignore the message, close the window, or click on the message? Um, I'd like to see you selections. Yeah, um, so keep on uh, answering.
yeah so let me see um so for the answers um 77 percent of you have said close the window and 23 percent have said um ignore the message um the best the best way to to handle this is closing the window just as we've illustrated in the previous slide where you're supposed to click on the x button so it is advisable to actually close the window but at least i am happy that none of you have selected click on the message actually um a good thing yeah we are really we are really run, we are really learning yeah um so on the same i wanted to talk about um cyber attacks and at times we might find that we have been compromised our security and also the security of our devices has been compromised so how would we know that we've been attacked uh so you're getting unusual or mysterious emails um most of the time uh, you'd say it doesn't make sense to you um at times you're getting messages about your password being changed and it is not you who has changed uh the password um you're getting locked out of an account or device and then suspicious or unusual pop-ups more than usual not the normal one or two pop-ups uh and then slower than normal connections yeah so these are indicators that you might um have been compromised and the main the best thing for you to do is to check with an adult if you're feeling that uh your security has been compromised in any way uh for further advice um anyway um thank you uh, that is all for me i'd like to hand over to oh sorry sorry about that um so uh the best way to recover from <clears throat> from attacks is uh, changing your passwords. So especially when you find that uh, you've been informed that uh, your password has been changed, the best thing you can do is there's usually an option to log out of all devices, change your password and then log out of all devices, yeah? And then uh, determine what has been lost or compromised, see what you can save, see what you have lost so that you can see uh your next step and then notify everyone because at times people uh for instance if you're hacked at times people are sent messages for instance i'd say like on instagram or i don't know whatsapp people are sent messages advising them to join forex for instance uh or some funny uh things or some funny links are sent to your friends and family uh so you need to notify your contacts that uh i have been i have been compromised and that is not coming that is not coming from me the communication you're getting is not coming from me and then there are always steps you can follow um for recovery or uh antivirus recovery steps that you can follow and then the good thing to do ensure all your files are backed up so even when you lose your data on your physical device you have your information backed up and you can also you can always go back to what you had before and then lastly and not least uh check with a trusted adult yeah um thank you for that um i think i'll hand it back over to Payne to continue with the rest of the presentation. Yeah. Thank you so much, Cynthia. So I think we could have a recap of what we've learned today before going into the Q&A. Um, the first thing that we need to remember is that um, we need to protect our identity online. There was the aspect of secure login and logout. There was the issue of online content and managing screen time, very important. The safe use of social media before posting, cyberbullying, using your phone smartly, and online gaming, played, and lastly, cyber attacks, beware. So for this point in time, uh, <clears throat> let's talk about some of the questions that uh, might have been in the, the chat box that have not been responded to yet. So we could have um, Henry, Cynthia, um, or even Anthony respond to any of those questions uh, as they come up. So, 
Okay, I will take the question from Lillian Lucilla, which says, which antiviral software is recommended? Is it necessary to install one? So to answer Lillian's question and maybe to the general audience, yes, antivirus is, is, is necessary. If possible, and you have the capability to install it, please do. So maybe you should take into account that when you have Windows operating system, and I'm talking about Windows, the one that is licensed. So the licensed one is when you, let's say, buy the laptop and it comes pre-installed with the Windows. Windows usually has the, the Windows Defender, uh, you know, antivirus solution already pre-installed. So when you have that one, that one in itself is adequate. However, when you let's say, uh, when you want to let's say in, incorporate additional tools such as online uh, protection, uh, let's see what else, you can have a way to scan your, your machine. Then in, the, in such a scenario, you can purchase uh, any of the antivirus solutions that would be affordable to you so that you can actually have that additional extra layer of security. So is it necessary? Yes. So Payne, I'd let you answer maybe one question. Um, there's uh, someone would like us to go back to the slides so I can just put that there. Um, is there any free software I can use to control browsing or block particular sites on my daughter's laptop how do i achieve that even youtube access so uh we can't really um <clears throat> give a particular recommendation for um, monitoring software however um one of the things that you could do is to talk to your internet service provider I believe this is something that, well, Safaricom don't, if you're using Safaricom, that is, they don't uh, say this, uh, it's not knowledge, but you could have a conversation up with them about what they call uh, um, safety protect. So I've forgotten the name. So this is, um, you pay an additional, I think, 100 or 200 shillings first to prevent uh, access of sites that they already have um, identified as dangerous or ones that are serving uh, malicious content. And then you could take it a step further and have them block specific websites and addresses for you uh, if that is something that you would be interested in, in doing. So I don't know about other ISPs, but I do know that that's something that you're able to do with Safaricom. Uh, Henry, I don't know if you have a specific uh, piece of software that can be used to do the monitoring, but um, I hope that answers your question, uh, Angela. So maybe just to add a little bit of information to Angela, <coughs> is there any free software I can use to control browsing? Uh, so free software, no. Ideally, you would want to buy an antivirus that allows you to be able to monitor, okay, not monitor, but rather be, be very aware of what is actually being browsed on the, on, the, on the particular PC. So that's one way in which you can actually control the level of uh, exposure, meaning that if someone tries to, to browse, let's say, a website that is considered unsafe the antivirus will not let you do that so angela that's one way so purchase uh, an antivirus software uh, stay away from free because this is where malware is, is usually when i talk about malware let's just call them virus this is where viruses are hidden on free software that is downloaded on with the with the expectation that it will perform the same way as a commercial piece of software and antivirus software is actually uh, affordable because if you buy, let's say, a license for 1500, this is a license that will last you for a whole year. So I think you can see the value for, for, for money at that end. 
Um, it's also worth mentioning that we, we have answered some questions on the chat. So just take note of it and let's see. Uh, okay. Cynthia maybe, so, can someone? <laughs> Sorry, yes. So you can answer you can answer one one question. Um okay, I'm checking the Q and A box and I can see um one question about um should one always use a VPN when online? Um I'd say um not always, but then I'd advise, uh, especially when uh, you're interacting or using uh, uh, so not softwares, uh, programs that would uh, you would easily get compromised based on your location. For instance, um, I'd say because I've talked about gaming today, uh, online gaming uh, for your own safety, because uh, some of these streaming uh, programs or applications uh, they really compromise you in terms of where you are where you're located and your personal information and your details and people out there can really know it so a vpn would um would help in one way or another but then primarily i would say you need to focus on um the main um main factors to ensure such as uh, secure passwords, uh, not full usernames, not real username, um, interacting with people you know, people you are familiar with and whatnot, that will give you much better security than uh, actually uh, using a VPN when online. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Cynthia. So <clears throat> someone has asked, um, um how do you manage mixed uh in mixed use devices so richard uh right now there's different profiles that you could have depending on what um uh, depending on what device you have but there's this mode that is uh i think it's largely called restricted mode so this is like a very limited use type of account that um, you can be able to tailor for children and it does have parent controls. So you could explore that. Uh, Sam is asking, how do random people get your number when you have not told anyone? That's a very good question. Uh, it brings us to an issue of privacy where we find that sometimes your number is uh, shared by a lot of these um, uh, malicious actors who we've mentioned before actually during this chat uh, that's try and harvest your information online. So the more information you're able to limit about yourself online, whether that's through these free sites that you sign up for, whether it's putting your phone number uh, when you're signing up for a certain newsletter uh, or to try and get access to a certain game and you give you put your details there, you end up having your data sold to uh, a lot of these um, uh, organizations that will now try and get to sell you things or will try and get to uh, bring you certain items. So this is something that um, you should take note of. So someone is asking how you avoid a pop-up. I think we handled that where you click on the X and you make sure you don't interact with it. Maurice is asking how you can avoid hackers on Roblox. So I think all you can do is to report that server. Uh, but other than that, there isn't much that you can do because this is an issue with how um, the environment and how that host uh, is being able to monitor uh, the gamers on that particular server. So a question from the Jogonas, what if cyberbullying gets to your nerves? Uh, I think it's a good thing for it to get to your nerves because this is something you do not uh, expect and it is not something that is welcome. Please remember to report to an adult. If it's happening um, with someone who you know, make sure you uh, have evidence of it and to point it out, whether that's to your parents, uh, your siblings, your guardian, your teacher, please talk to an adult who you trust and have them handle the matter. 
Uh, it's a good thing that it does get to your nerves. Please do not get used to it. Bullying is something that has no place and should not have no place. There's a question on whether it is safe to save passwords on Google. Uh, we talked about a uh, password manager uh, over the box, um, one of the questions that we had. So please don't save your passwords on Google or on iCloud or on any other out of the box uh, password manager. Uh, we keep getting uh, compromises for even some of these big uh, entities. And when passwords are hacked, you find that uh, they're able to be accessed by people on the internet. So please don't save them, use password managers instead. Okay, I will take up uh, one, a few more. So how to monitor and manage access on internet gadgets and home Wi-Fi? I guess in regards to this, as Anthony had mentioned, when we're talking about home Wi-Fi, uh, home Wi-Fi is normally installed by, let's say, the ISP. So it can be any of the different vendors that do that. So the way you can make sure that it's secure, first of all, do not use a password that is very easy. So for example, I have seen, uh, you know, okay, people, people have their names. So do not call your Wi-Fi in, in this example. Uh, because it's a KPMG representation, let's say I will not call my Wi-Fi KPMG, right? I will try to give it uh, a unique name that is not easily identifiable to, let's say, uh, the home in which it's operating. And then secondly, you can have the additional control of having a password that you yourself manage and not the ISP. So what happens is that when the, when the people who come to install the internet, they will already come configure and then give you the password tell you this is the password for your wi-fi but if, what if you want to change it you know you should have that capability so always change it and make sure that it's something that only you can can be able to control that way you will have a, con a control and monitoring of the devices that are within your home wi-fi uh the other question is how to identify scammers uh this one usually it's they entice you with things that you have not you have not registered for. Someone is offering you a free iPhone. Someone tells you that you're the 100th or the 1 million uh, visitor to the portal. So you win uh, 10 million Kenya shillings. You know, I mean, it's too good to be true. Don't believe it. Don't fall for it. Yeah. Scammers are very, they're very open. You know, they'll try to give you something for nothing, put simply. Alice says, why can't you put your gender online? Um, you can actually, but as Payne has mentioned, you keep your privacy settings in a way that does not reveal too much. There's nothing about putting, there's nothing bad about putting your gender, uh, but again, only connect with people you know and ensure that your privacy is well taken care of. Uh, then Jugunas, what if a friend asks your BFF asks, uh, okay, I didn't get quite that question what that question says. Uh, what if you BFF? Uh, okay, I'm not sure. Oh, they asked you for your password. Well, don't give them. Your password should be only be known to you. Okay. How do people have free Wi-Fi? Well, again, it's free uh, because you don't know who is controlling it. Case in point, for example, the Wi-Fi in your home is controlled by, let's say, your parents. They're the ones who give you the password. They're the ones who control the devices that are connected. Uh, when, let's say, your relatives come to visit, they're the ones who will acknowledge and say, this is uncle, this is auntie, and they can have the password to, <clears throat> for the Wi-Fi. And then after they leave, they can decide to remove that device from, from the network or change the password so that many people don't have it, perhaps maybe after a family event. So people have free Wi-Fi by leveraging on the fact that you do not know who is controlling it. And if I create another KPMG2 Wi-Fi, how will you differentiate it from KPMG1? And it's both open. So that's how people hack it because one, anyone can access it and there are ways in which people can manipulate and be able to, to pretend that they are the ones who have the legitimate Wi-Fi. So when you visit, let's say Facebook, you're not visiting the real Facebook, you're visiting someone else's. 
And then finally, should one use multiple emails for social sites school? Yes, the definite answer is yes. Do not use the same uh, email for your social media and for your work or any other formal relation. So keep your personal emails for personal uh, items and then keep your professional emails for LinkedIn and the rest separate such that those two do not mix and you will not have an issue. So I'll hand it over back to Payne. To Thank you so much. Uh, I think that brings us to the end of our session uh, for the children. Uh, we will now be <clears throat> moving into the session for the parents. This is in five minutes. So we just want to thank you so much for creating time today and for joining the call uh, very early. Uh, we are so happy that we got to interact with each and every one of you. Uh, we hope that you have learned something. Please share this with your friends uh, and make sure you're being on the lookout that we are all being cyber safe. So thank you once again. Uh, we're looking forward to having the parents in the next session that begins uh, in, a, in around five minutes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you. So just as a request uh, for the parents, please join. For uh, those who are, who are not yet to join, we will just give them some time to do so. Uh, this next session is strictly for parents. So please um, keep that in mind. Thank you.
Okay, so just um, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we've had a chance to go over the house rules. So let me just invite Anthony to, let me just invite uh, Henry, sorry, to just uh, give us an overview of what we'll be talking about today. Okay, thank you, Payne. And thank you for the participants for joining in the cybersecurity session. Uh, I'd like to welcome you for taking the time. So in today's session, uh, we're going to be looking at eight, eight pieces of key takeaways that you can actually have a look at when you're talking about uh, cybersecurity for your children. And in this case, we're going to be looking at protecting your kids' identity online. And this is in regards to uh, you know, creation of profiles for either the, the kids that will play games. Uh, we're going to be looking at how do you keep and watch, how do you ensure that they watch content online safely, the safe use of social media, um, cyberbullying, which has become uh, you know, something uh, very normal or rather something that is you know uh, not well it, it's something not encouraged and how to take note of it how to deal with it and some you know mitigations um, using smartphones safe um, smartly or safely in this case online gaming uh, which is going to relate in terms of again protecting your kids identity online uh, the different kinds of cyber attacks that your kids are are exposed to and also as adults and also screen time advice so this just aims it does not cover everything but it just means to it just means aims to ensure that you can have some easy and quick ways to actually pick up and be able to protect your you know the cyber security space and make it safe for you for your children so i guess with that we can move on to the next uh, slide so when you're going through the particular session itself we want to encourage you to type into the ch chat box um let us know what would you like to learn about cyber safety uh what questions do you have about cyber safety and in these questions, it can be, you know, something that you have, you have encountered and experienced, maybe you have had, and maybe you would like to have a little bit more insight uh, in terms of information. And then you can also enter your responses into the chat box. So uh, maybe when we pose a question and we would require a response, so you can put it into the chat text box. All right. So I think we can move on. Okay, so when we start off with protecting your kids' identity. Just a second, please. Okay. Apologies for that. Uh, so when you're keeping your identity secured, what, what are some of the practices that you can ensure that, you know, aim to holistically ensure that things are accurately and adequately taken care of? So one is in regards to the usernames that are incorporated into the, the profile itself. So we encourage you to choose usernames wisely and then practice password safety. So in the previous session for the kids, we had, uh, you know, touched a little bit in terms of what is password safety, what are some of the things we can do to keep passwords secure. We talked about making sure that it is not easily identifiable, it is not easily guessable, and it incorporates some best practices to ensure that it's safe and, uh, you know, uh, cannot be easily compromised. Um, the other thing is to ensure that you check up on your kids before they sign up. So before they even sign up for, let's say, the social media platforms, it's always good to find out, uh, you know, um, who, who are going to be um, connecting with them. Is it family? 
and how do you how do you ensure that they do not uh you know um sign up on very questionable um platforms just to ensure that they do not get exposed to uh vices that are very prevalent within the internet cyberspace the other item is in regards to enabling security settings so enabling security settings can come in different formats so this can be on the devices that you have purchased for your kids and also on the devices perhaps that you own but you give them to use from time to time maybe as they are either doing their studies and the likes um keeping software updated uh never sharing or posting email addresses. I know this can be a little bit uh, of a catch 22. Uh, so yes, in some platforms, you might uh, have your email address available, but again, try to ensure that it is very uh, well taken care of by ensuring that perhaps it is not easily uh, retrievable by search engines by using the privacy settings. Uh, the other item is not responding to spam messages. So spam messages are those messages that come into your email inbox and once they're there you know you had not uh, perhaps registered for them but perhaps your email address got picked up by search engines or you entered it somewhere and now you're now getting some random messages um not sharing information with strangers avoiding prim wi-fi and logging out of, uh, logging out and locking of computers so these are just some of the ways in which you can keep your identity your your children's identity is secured. And like I mentioned, this is, these are just on a very high level, some of the best practices that you can be able to, to pick for free and be able to incorporate them. So I think we can move on to the next slide, which now talks about um, online content. All right, so when we're talking about online content, we're looking at how do you do your children connect to to let's say platforms the social media sites how do you ensure that they only sign up or you allow them to sign up on sites that are that are legitimate so one of the ways you can do that is to ensure that there is that secure icon padlock at the very top of the page and as, as we had uh, touched a little bit in terms of ensuring the safety the padlock icon means that that particular site is is well taken care of in terms of ensuring its security so the security feature in this case means that when you enter the username and the password at the back end this particular information is not passed on in clear text clear text is kind of like what we are viewing on the screen right now so the watching content online this is something easily readable um, on the on the screen so when the padlock icon is is placed on on that particular website that watching content online will not be will not be in a way that is actually visible it's probably going to be jumbled up in either permutations of numbers and characters so that's one of the ways you can ensure that the site is secure um so do not sign up on sites again as i had mentioned when the when the children are supposed to sign up on the sites they're supposed to ask you for permission so an example could be the page that you see on on the screen there just a second uh let me try and sort out some background noise I hope it's a little bit more clear. So as I have, as I was mentioning, if you look at the screen, the snippet on the screen there, you can see that it has a HTTP. It does not have that particular padlock. But if you compare, let's say, with a different site with a padlock, it will have the HTTPS and it will actually show that padlock. So this is one of the key ways you can actually know that the site is legitimate because for most of these big platforms, they also want that validation of ensuring that their 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 website or their platform is actually well known and trusted and by having that padlock it actually shows that you can actually tell that this is a legitimate site from an illegitimate site so that's one of the ways you can ensure in terms of ensuring that 
uh, you get your information from the correct places by watching out for fake news. So the other component in terms of uh, watching what you download. So downloads is uh, downloading is normal um, in day-to-day -day activities when someone is browsing online. But the question now becomes, where are they downloading it from? So for example, if it's a game, is it downloadable from the Play Store? Um, if it's if it's something like a, an antivirus solution or some other kind of uh, piece of software that you require, let's say, for them to have installed for school or learning, are you downloading it from the correct particular platform? That's one of the ways you can ensure that um, you know, they're getting it from the correct place. And again, recognizing scams. So for example, if your children are using these devices, you also need to be aware that scams will, will or rather adverts tailored in terms of scams hidden behind adverts sometimes will be very common. So you find that maybe there's a pop-up saying that uh, you, you have won a particular uh, gift and it's enticing you to be able to click to it but when you click to it it leads you away from that particular um, software that you're using it now takes you to a different environment which is probably asking you for additional information so you need to be on the lookout for that and ideally the best way to handle this is that if you have very young kids you can you can you can try and maybe have a device that does not allow uh, downloading of of additional software besides what you have installed in place. So by not having, by having this particular security feature, you can be sure that even if the child were to click mistakenly on an icon, then they will not download something without your knowledge because it will either require some additional extra level of checks where you have to enter, let's say the, the username and the password to actually authenticate. But in that place, it gives you that confidence that you will not, be, that you will not be getting um, malware. So I think then you can move to the next slide. All right, so when we're talking about uh, social media, so social media in this case, is the various platforms. So this is the TikToks, the Facebooks, and any other social media uh, platform that uh, we we as adults and also um, the, the children interact with depending on how old they are. So the best social media safety tips in this case will include that you will have, you know, you're supposed to follow age restrictions. So you will not want to have a, a young child create a profile that mimics or looks like it's a uh, you know, like a profile is, is for an adult because they're again, they're going to be exposed to, let's say, advertisement or content that is not appropriate for their age. So make sure that, again, before this particular profile is being created, you have gone, you know, you are actually doing it with them. For strong passwords, now a strong password in this case is a password that one does not uh, reflect either something that is easily relatable to you. So it is not the child's name, it is not your name, it's not their date of birth, it's not uh, maybe where you live, but rather it's a combination of different alphanumerics. So it can be a combination of, let's say, capital, lowercase, it can even be a passphrase, for example, but it, 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 it is supposed to be the, like the first line of defense for that particular profile that to ensure that, um, you know, the profile is safe uh, from from being compromised by hackers. Um, reviewing privacy settings often. So privacy settings often uh, go ignored. And it's mostly because maybe perhaps they're hidden within other additional settings that you might not interact with uh, very often. But it's always good to see what those privacy settings offer, and then you can actually incorporate them. So for example, you can have the privacy setting to ensure that that particular profile is not easily, uh, you know, accessible by search engines by having them, you know, visible when they're doing that particular search online. So 
The other component is um, stop and think before posting. So again, teach them and show them that, uh, you know, uh, what is appropriate to post and what is not appropriate to post. Personal identifiable information is not appropriate to post, but rather guide them and ensure that before they make any posts public on the profile, then it can be uh, validated by an adult. Uh, care, be careful about what they click. Again, this goes back to where we had talked about downloading content. So this can be games, applications, uh, and anything else that they interact with. So they need you need to be sure that where they are get they're getting this information or software from is from the legitimate environment. Uh, the other component is to ensure that only friends are only known friends to you are actually able to to communicate or be connected to that profile and this prevents that particular uh, possibility of having strangers who are online grooming children so this is an online grooming is where an adult tries to create a relationship with someone who is very younger with the purpose of causing harm so this can be kidnapping or even other malicious intent. So just making sure that the friends who connect to that profile are known to you and are physically identifiable. Um, respecting other people's privacy. So it's something that is also need, needs to be communicated. Uh, again, privacy in this case means that the kind of content that is being posted, uh, the best uh, ways to ensure that you do not uh, post something that is offensive and you know, again, which relates to not being a bully, and we shall touch a little bit on that, and how to keep private information private. So private information in this case can be, uh, you know, where the family is going on holiday, uh, what what they did, uh, it is, so this kind of information can be kept uh, private until maybe after that particular event has taken place. And there are reasons as to why uh, this kind of information is, is, is kept separate. So, uh, I had mentioned about um, internet, uh, or rather talking about bullying. So it relates in a little bit in terms of internet trolls. So trolls, these are mean people on the internet, and their main purpose is to cause provocative uh, reactions from people. So they will either comment or post very provocative material with the aim of luring people into commenting and creating a very uh, conflicting environment and it may, its main aim is to make people angry so you should let your kids know and identify what an internet trolls look like and how to respond so the first thing is never to respond to a troll because the more you respond to them the more wood you're putting onto the fire and it makes them even more eager to make people angry because they have already solicited that re that response they went they went they wanted and now they can be able to add a little bit more fuel so never respond the other component is in regards to to the troll is to block the troll's account or this particular profile block it completely such that it will not interact with the with your child's profile uh, don't post that you're being trolled. Again, this relates to point number one, where you're not responding. You're not letting the troll know that, you know, this particular uh, post they've made or the comments they're making are actually provocative to you, but instead you pick a way that does not show them that there is some level of interaction. Because if they find out that you're getting offended, then they will actually post more. Um, screenshot interactions is do not, again, fuel the fire by adding more because screenshots have a way of leaking and it will get uh, into the space at one point or another Five, reporting it into the social four, media platforms three, it's reporting two, it into the social one, media police or the people who manage the, the platform um, and then finally changing the account settings or telling a trusted adult so always make sure that your your children are aware that they can trust you to be able to report such uh, behavior when it becomes when it when it shows itself so online grooming i had mentioned that this is one of the ways in which um, profiles are are created so an adult might be create might might also create a malicious adult now in this case might might create a profile that mimics a child but in terms of the conversations they're having 
you know, they are almost very fishy being that they will be asking them some very personal questions, but their main intention is to try and lure them out and cause them harm. So just try and make note of the people whom um, your kids are interacting with. Um, ensure that they, the same physical, you know, things that happen within the physical space. You will never let your child go and meet a stranger um, online outside the gate. So the same principle applies that they will they should not interact with strangers on the virtual space. I always encourage them to respond or report suspicious behavior uh, to an adult. So this can be a sibling who's an, el an elder sibling, uh, an auntie, basically someone who is trusted. Um, always ensure that they engage with people you actually know and trust. So this, this is one of the ways in which you can avoid uh having having them interact with profiles that you do not know and then most of all if you trust that something is off about a particular profile again you can block further contact report it and make sure that uh you know you're keeping you're keeping the environment safe <laughs> And then we shall talk about uh, cyberbullying. So cyberbullying in this particular regard is going to be... So cyberbullying in this, in this regard, I think uh, I can let my colleague Payne handle it. I think I'm having some. Thank you so much, Henry. <laughs> Thank you for that introductory uh, session, as well as giving us tips on what some of the things that um, should be looked out for are. Um, thank you so much. So cyberbullying is something that um, I think, uh, for, unfortunately, um, children and adults now as well, uh, encounter while they're on the cyberspace. And it can best be defined as when someone threatens or insults you or spreads <clears throat> gossip about you on social media, in emails or other internet forums. There's things that uh, guardians, parents, teachers can do when um, their child is being cyberbullied. The first is that they should not respond the second is that they should be in a position of telling a trusted adult. So I think it's important to point out that everything is connected. Um, for you to be able to deal with these issues pertaining to being safe on the internet well, there has to be a relationship of trust between parents, guardians, teachers, as well as the child. Uh, you'd be amazed at how many things uh, these children actually interact with while on the internet, which you may never find about either up until it comes up uh, by way of say an incident or something that someone else points out and then you're made aware that this is something that the child has actually encountered. So the best way is to ensure that you already have a relationship of trust. The next is blocking the bully. And lastly, making sure that privacy is at the foreground um, of each and every interaction of the internet. So please instill it in the children that they need to make sure that they always have privacy in mind. That find the internet is a wonderful place and they're able to interact with friends, <clears throat> meet new people, play games, but there has to be an element of privacy that's at the back of their mind whenever they're having these interactions on the internet. So if your child is being cyberbullied by someone, um, when your child is in the presence of someone else who is being cyberbullied, there's an aspect of allyship that should be cultivated within uh, the children. And that is them being able to provide support, them being an upstander, as well as reporting things, and them not participating. What we need to understand is that if we create and instill a culture of zero tolerance to cyberbullying, even if they're not the ones who are the victims, then you're setting them up for a future where some of these things are not normal, that some of these things are not tolerable. I think for uh, parents um, and teachers uh, and all the adults who are on the call really, 
Um, if you have experienced any form of bullying in the past, you'll agree with me that it got to a point where it became normal. That, uh, it was just a rite of passage. It was just a way of life. And we sort of got desensitized to the idea that um, this is something that you'll have to go through. You just have to make sure that you get through it. And unfortunately, that was as a result of the systems that were in place not necessarily making it clear that that was something that was not welcome. So this speaks to the point that if the child understands that this is something that should not be taking place, even if they're not, they make it even harder for the bullies to feel comfortable with doing some of those things on the cyberspace. And if being mean on the internet is something that they are already, that is already shunned, then they will also be responsible users of the internet, even as they become adults. So how exactly can you help? The first thing is to communicate. Please report offensive or hurtful comments, um, whether they are the target or not. Next, be careful about what they say, what they send, what they post, and what they blog about others. An intentional bully, an intentional bullying is still bullying. And sometimes we find that our loved ones, our children are actually on the wrong end of the spectrum where sometimes they could be the ones who are jumpstarting these conversations. Next, recognize, show unexpected anger, depression or frustration after using any device or avoiding the device use altogether. These are some of the subtle signs that as <clears throat> the adults use of taking note of. You need to know whether um, there's a change in the demeanor or even the mood after they're on a certain platform. Maybe they get really frustrated when they're gaming online or on specific days when they're playing a certain game. These are very uh, small but telltale signs that could let you understand how um, their interactions are on the cyberspace. The next is an easiness about going to school or participating in group team activities. There's usually a very intuitive aspect of children that sometimes get gets overlooked. Engage with them, understand why are they withdrawn? Why are they frustrated? Why do they seem a bit more mellowed out than they usually are? These are things that, would put, that could point you in the direction of an incident that may have taken place. Next is take action. Remember I led with talking about how, uh, because no action may have been taken by some of these institutions or systems in place, then you sort of get desensitized to the idea that even if I was to do something about it, nothing will happen. And so let me just take this suffering or take this line down because nothing will be done in the first place. So when children come to you with issues to do with being cyber bullied, other than listening, there has to be some sort of action which instills in them the idea or the understanding that because this is not welcome, then something will be done about it. Most children don't speak up out of fear. And the idea that even if I cause trouble, which is essentially the idea of say snitching or speaking about things that they're going through, nothing is going to happen to this person. And so what would be the point? So not replying and not sharing is something that you need to instill in them. Reporting to the platform and blocking the user from further interaction, as well as escalating the issue to your child's school or the police as necessary, because some of these interactions expand out of the confines of school. You might find that some of the bullies are people who they share classes with, or they go to school with, or they even play with within their neighborhoods. So the next aspect is using your smartphone, your phone smartly or using, <clears throat> or using smartphones smartly. I know this is a bit of a headache for a lot of uh, adults where um, children now have access to mobile phones a lot early and a lot sooner. And again, uh, the possibilities are limitless when it comes to the things that they're able to access, whether it's mature content, whether it's uh, the grooming aspect that had been mentioned by Henry, whether it's the cyberbullying that we've spoken about just now. Some of the things that you need to be aware of is that you should set a password. 
you should get permission to download. Uh, they should get permission to download from you. Um, only respond to numbers that you know. Be careful about what you communicate. Ask before you take and share. Be mindful. Keep it safe. Keep the phone up to date for them. Let them know about being careful with Bluetooth and even open Wi-Fi networks uh, as far as connecting carefully is concerned. So please understand that um, while talking about the cyberspace, this is where children are going to exist. They already exist on there and the future can only get more digital. So these are things that they'll carry with them well into their adulthood. So cultivate a culture of them being able to ask for help whenever some of these things are not entirely clear or apparent to them. I'd like to invite uh, Cynthia to proceed with um, the part of today's session that is speaking to gaming online. Uh, yeah, thank you, Pim. Um, <clears throat> so online gaming, um, <clears throat> So uh, there's some things we need to look at to ensure that um, uh, children are uh, practicing safe online gaming um, in a way. So first of all, you need to implement restrictions um, in terms of uh, how, how free are they uh, in terms of who are they going to uh, play these games with online uh, is it, are you going to restrict them uh, to people like maybe from their from their school or neighbors or people you actually know and then also set passwords to prevent purchases you know because kids can be really um, quick to if they see a uh, certain purchase will improve their maybe give them more lives in the game or something they might be so quick to go for it so you need to prevent that um set clear expectations and rules in terms of timing who they're playing with um i should it be supervised or unsupervised uh, i would advise that it is supervised and whatnot so be careful what they communicate. They say a lot of times you should not let your children be online and gaming and you're not there because you need to listen to how wow. they're communicating. Uh, you might find out that maybe they're being bullied or they're bullying their friends uh, online, which is not right. And also, wow. you also get a catch. We might also catch, um, catch on in case they're interacting with the wrong people online. Um, so also approve uh, the apps that they're downloading. In short, uh, don't let them just download any apps. You need to check before, you, before they download applications. And then don't allow them to use personal usernames. Uh, they should not, like for instance, be like Cynthia Musindi. Uh, maybe they can use uh, some gamer tags or something. And then now limit chat conversations. You do not want um, uh, the children to be uh, conversing with everyone and anyone um, as let's say inter what would happen when you are not there you would not really be able to keep up with uh, all the people they're conversing with in terms of in their chats or as they're gaming and then uh, don't answer private messages from strangers because most of the time uh, strangers that want to know you more and that aspect of getting to know you more is what uh, actually uh, affects the safety of you and your family in general because uh, you do not want a stranger to know you for your own uh, safety. Watch out for links and pop-ups. This one would, these pop-ups and links would uh, uh, bring in uh, viruses to your devices, uh, malware, spyware, anything uh, to your devices which is not safe. And then uh, tell children to report any bullying so that you are you ensure they are not being bullied and they are communicating effectively yeah so those are some of the tips you need to follow when uh, to ensure online gaming is actually safe and fun so um actually uh so when it comes to let's say pop-ups or something uh you might get uh some ads that uh 
advertise specific applications and whatnot. So sometimes you might end up clicking on something or installing something that will affect your device. So you need to know uh, how to identify whether an application is safe or is real or is fake. So first of all, you'll check the name, uh, look into the developer's name, and then also check on the reviews. At times the reviews might be misleading because uh, they might have just used bots to ensure that it seems believable. Um, but then uh, you'd still need to look into it, check on the date uh, it was uh, produced, like the production date. And then if there are any discounts, uh, at times some discounts uh, can be what is pulling you towards the application or maybe you might be seeing uh, it is a cheaper option for instance when it comes to a gaming application compared to the actual one uh, those are things you need to be beware to be aware of uh, look at the screenshots compare with the actual one and then also read the descriptions to understand uh, what the application is actually offering and then now uh, when you look at the application details. Uh, most of the time, uh, these fake applications don't have so many downloads. So that is how it differentiates it from the real application. And also, you are the one as a parent to permit uh, your child to download the application. So you only permit them after uh, you've gone through those steps. Yeah. Um, so uh, we are advised, um, if, for instance, you uh, find that you have downloaded a fake app, you need to delete the application, visit the app, the app store, and then reset your phone. Okay, so um, on cyber attacks, at times you might uh, have missed uh, a point or two when it comes to precautions and preventing, or at times you can't just avoid it. So you find yourself, uh, you find that you have been compromised. So in such instances, uh, you need to look out for spam and phishing. So you get emails like uh, asking uh, for your personal information, sensitive information. Um, and that's why I say when you hand, uh, for instance, children devices, you need to be the one who is checking these things because a child can easily uh, respond to such things and give out information which would help um, an attacker actually have access to your devices. And then now viruses and worms, uh, which kind of, uh, which would also be attached to files online uh, on ads on ads or pop-ups or anything. So you're advised to not click on pop-ups, to follow those uh, small nitty-gritty uh, steps to ensure that you are not you don't become susceptible to these things. And then spyware and adware. You are aware spyware uh, is where you are basically tracked. Everything that you do on your device is tracked and whatnot. So that is something you need to look out for. Adware is where it is just endless ads for you, in short. Ransomware and DDoS. So DDoS, de denial of service, um, is where someone can uh, attack you device and then uh, use ransomware to be like if you do not if you do not give me this amount of money um, I will publish your personal information that I've gained from your uh, from your system or maybe I will shut down your system because now that is DDoS uh, slow denial of service in short so those are the things uh, you need to watch out for so how do you detect an attack? So you're getting mysterious emails, uh, as I've said before. Uh, mostly they don't make sense, or you they are more about uh, uh, your account, your account uh, settings, your personal, your emails, uh, accounts being locked, such things. So you get messages about your passwords being changed. You get locked out of an account or a device, suspicious or unusual pop-ups, and then you, your devices become slower than normal. Yeah, those are some of the instances that show that you might be under attack. Uh, in order to recover from attack, we are advised to change uh, our passwords and 
determine what has been lost and compromised. And here we highly um, recommend having backup files so that uh, you are not entirely affected. You still uh, are able to regain uh, your, your documents, your uh, details and everything. And then you need to notify everyone uh, in your contact list that you have been compromised and then follow your antivirus recovery steps and also check with a trusted adult. Oh, you are the adult in this case. Yeah. Um, so <clears throat> in order to avoid uh, being compromised, uh, we need to have strong passwords. Um, I think we've been told uh, it is important to have like not so predictable, don't use your child's name, don't use your birthdays and whatnot. And then be aware of unfamiliar applications. And so that do not do not uh, click on just anything, uh, the pop-ups and unusual messages. And then use a secured network for Wi-Fi. Don't use the free Wi-Fi or yeah, make sure software is also up to date because um, outdated softwares might have some, some vulnerabilities that can be uh, used uh, in an attacker's benefit. And then uh, enable security and antivirus features. That's how you prevent cyber attacks. Yeah. Uh, Um, okay, so for building cyber trust, uh, this is um, in an instance of being a, a model parent. Uh, you need to stay involved and maintain close communication to help children, your children stay safe within when they're using the internet. So, you know, you need to educate your kids on the skills needed to be safe online, to be safe online, and then ask questions and encourage kids to be open. And on and what works the best is practice what you preach by setting a good example, because kids are observant and they usually like, but mom, I saw you do this. No, you need to practice what you preach uh, to the kids. <clears throat> so some of the rules that you need to, some of the things that you need to put in place. Um, uh, can you go to the next slide, please? Um, to ensure kids are safe when they are online, you need to set clear ground rules on how they will uh, use uh, the devices, especially when they are online and which applications they'll access, what, what are they allowed to do in, and all of that. And then you really need to be keen on the activities that they are indulging in when they are online. Um, it is your job to ensure you your kid is safe when they are online. And then uh, don't give out personal information. Um, upload antivirus tools to keep your devices safe and yourself. Be careful with strangers. And then post before you post. In short, uh, it, what you're posting, will it uh, give uh, someone information that you don't want them to have? Is it something that would end up being categorized as bullying? Is it something that will be offensive? Would you end up being a troll? Yeah, so before you post, before you post, you really need to consider those things and then be a friend and not a bully. Yeah, so that's all for me. I would like to hand it back to Payne to continue the Q&A session. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sim. Thank you so much, Cynthia. Okay, so I will take the first question posted by Esther. Please clarify on the correct uh, forward slash safe URL. Uh, let's see. So Esther, when you're talking about uh, safe URL, maybe I will request uh, my colleague Payne to scroll back to the slide where we had, I think it's uh, slide number eight. Let's 
so that I think it's like eight or nine. The one which had the true news image. I think the one below is slide number nine. Okay. That's good. All right. So for anyone who's trying to consider what, what is a safe URL and what is an unsafe URL. So as I had uh, portrayed before, organizations usually have a way to connect to their, to their end users. So for example, we have, let's say, uh, Safaricom, which has their own web portal. Their web portal will be, let's say, safaricom.co.ke, right? And at the very top, it's going to have an icon which shows a padlock. So that padlock is to show that that particular website is belongs and can be validated to belong to Safaricom. So if you encounter to, let's say, you encounter a, another website that is, that is saying that it is Safaricom, and it does not have that padlock uh, icon. Uh, let's see, uh, Payne, will you kindly allow me just to share my screen? No problem. <clears throat> okay, just let me know if it's visible. Yes, it is. So you can be able to see that this particular URL has a padlock indicated close to it. So it means that this particular URL can be validated to belong to that particular organization. So if I were to, let's say, visit another URL that did not have this particular padlock icon and was also purporting to be from the same company, I would be suspicious because for them, they will actually want to ensure that whoever is visiting our site can be confident that they are visiting the legitimate one. And if you want to always also get a little bit more information about that particular uh, URL, you can always click on that particular icon and the icon itself will give you more in-depth information. So that's, that's an example of how do you ensure uh, a false versus a fake URL. So that's that's a sample snippet. All right. And I think the other question was in relation to Bluetooth. What are the this is from Lillian? What are the issues with Bluetooth that we should be aware of? So Bluetooth is a it's a way of for different devices to exchange information. In itself, uh, Bluetooth is not really vulnerable because you what what the the vulnerability would allow that would occur is let's say when you're connecting to unknown devices. Now, what what usually happens is whenever you let's say trying to connect your phone to let's say your Bluetooth uh, earphones, your Bluetooth headset, you normally have to pair. So, for example, when you're connecting, it asks you to pair with a particular let's say uh, pin or to validate that that particular device is the one you're connecting to, then you can actually allow it to, you know, have that particular communication channel. So the vulnerability comes in when you're connecting to devices without first of all validating. That, that in essence means that someone can actually be able to download information from your device or upload information into your device. Because remember, it's a it's a communication channel. So if you have Bluetooth that is not protected by first of all, having your device connect or pair fast, then you would actually be exposing yourself. So that answers that question. Um, I will let Payne take uh, the next question in terms of are all smartphones created equal? I think Payne, you can take up that one. Thank you for that question, Marian. So I think this is a very big um, conversation on whether, say, for example, Android phones 
are they better to have than um say iPhones or or are iPhones better than Android phones? To be honest with you, uh either is just as vulnerable as the other. <clears throat> uh the thing that you probably would want to pay more attention to uh, is how quickly uh, security updates are rolled out to the particular device. So one of the things that I hear, um, well, I don't know if that's the reason why, but one of the things that people prefer, say, uh, iPhones for would be the long support that they get. Uh, we find that phones they released maybe uh, a number of years ago are still getting latest updates and security updates. So whatever your preference is, just make sure that um, the devices are getting enough uh, security updates, regardless of whether they were bought uh, several years ago or not. So it's a question really of longevity uh, as far as protecting users are concerned. Um, the other risk is with the kind of applications that you have. So some of you uh, might have uh, devices that maybe uh, have a spyware installed on them, which we've discussed now, or they are really bloated with hardware because of the games. So you really have to be careful about the applications that the children install on the devices, because that is what may end up compromising the phone whether Android, iOS, you name it. But that's a very good question. Another one was, are there tools to help parents monitor online activities that you could recommend? Uh, from the top of my head, not really, uh, but there was um, <clears throat> an answer from Henry about how you could uh, tweak the antivirus software to have the same uh, outcome. So maybe Henry, you could speak to that once more. This is a question from the Njugunas. All right, thank you, Payne. In regards to are there tools to help um, parents monitor online activities? <coughs> Sorry for that. If you purchase um, one of those antivirus solutions that has online online protection, that online protection will, will do a number of things. So one, it will make sure that first of all, the URL that is being visited by the person interacting with the device. So this can be both the, the adult or the child. It will be validated. It will see, it will check the reputation of that URL against known malicious URLs out there. And if it is flagged to be amongst those myriad of malicious URLs, it will be flagged and you will not be allowed to, to click to it. So that's one of the ways. Um, the second way is that you can actually limit your, you can actually limit your, the interaction in terms of what, what sites would you want people to actually visit on the browser? So you can actually lock down some sites that if let's say someone types youtube.com, it will let it will ask for an additional, let's say verification, like please enter the pass the adult password or pin or something, such that you will need to have that extra level of security before you you can actually connect to it. So that's one of the ways. But in terms of monitor, okay, in terms of monitoring, that's one of the ways in which it does that particular. It's not very holistic but at least it gives you that, that uh, functionality. Um, maybe the other way in which you can monitor activity is just making sure that if your child has the phone, um, depending on how, how old they are, be curious to know what exactly are they watching because it's very easy for something, for, for, for content to be displayed uh, using algorithms, like if they watch this, they will recommend more of, more of a particular kind of content. So if you notice that, you know, what, the, what they're getting is not age appropriate, you can actually uh, maybe reset the cache and, or maybe when you're setting the profile, specify that you only want them to view age appropriate content for let's say five to six year olds or, or the likes. And I think this one also touches to Richard's question. <coughs> 
which says uh, his, uh, I struggle with getting age appropriate content. So when you're setting up, let's say the profile on, on a particular device for the children, let's say, you can specify that this child is, let's say, uh, six years or seven years, and it will only limit them to content that is appropriate for that age bracket. It will not bring them um, in for, uh, content that is, let's say, meant for 13 year olds and as you progress up the, up the ladder. So I hope that particular uh, response addresses both of them. Um, so the Jugunas have another question. Is it necessary to install antivirus on a phone? By all means, I think phones nowadays are as powerful, if not more powerful than computers. And I think you can agree. You have phones that have about 8 GB of RAM <laughs> or even 16. They have storage spaces of about 128 gigabytes. Now, if you look at this two, three, four, five down years down, down the line, this is actually what a PC, personal computer would have. So now with the, with the additional processing power comes with the additional capabilities of, you know, PCs. So if you have the capability to install an antivirus, by all means do. If you can purchase the antivirus for your PC, you should also consider the same for your phone because your phone is more important, if not as important as your PC, because in most cases, if the phone is stolen and you know all this data is lost, you will actually be at a loss. So antivirus is good just to make sure that you have that additional extra layer of security. So I'll hand it over back to Payne. Thank you so much, Henry. <clears throat> um, I can't see any more questions. Uh, and we have no comments either. Uh, I don't know. Um, we keep getting uh, questions about whether the, the recording will be shared. Uh, yes, it is going to be shared. So uh, rest assured that that's something that's there. We thought we'd have a bit more um, questions uh, for this session. Uh, is there anything else uh, perhaps that you're curious about? Any concern? Any additional item that you think we uh, maybe should shed more light on? So Terry, that's just what Henry uh, had explained. <clears throat> so I think, um, please make a point of uh, <clears throat> engaging even more with uh, these children. Uh, we had a session uh, early on in the week in one of the primary schools, uh, um, close, not too far from our office. And we were really surprised at the amount of um, things that <clears throat> the children are now interacting with. So um, there's a lot, there's a lot that they see. Uh, we keep getting the question of how to monitor the activities online, um, which is, I think, a, a, a great question. But at the same time, a, a situation where they're volunteering this information themselves is also what you really want to aim for. Because the moment, um, at least with, this, with the cyberspace, the moment you've uh, established yourself as someone who is keen on monitoring what uh, the children want to do without any conversation about what some of the important matters are, then the child makes maybe even twice the effort to not be as open or to not share with you because the whole idea of them uh, accessing the internet uh, already feels like it's something that's not welcome, at least for the children. So you might make things a bit difficult if they know that they're being monitored and they'll go out of their way to find out what exactly is happening. So cultivate a culture of trust to have these conversations uh, so that maybe they even volunteer some of this information 
uh, I think you'd be better off having them discuss every step with you than having a reactive uh, setup where you're simply uh, on the lookout for them interacting with material that they may not want to interact with. So Robert is asking how we can stop the pop-up completely. Sometimes you're not uh, able to completely uh, stop them, but I would recommend ad blockers. So these are extensions that you can install on your <clears throat> on your browser, which in turn help you block any sort of ads, whether these are the floating ones, the ones that are hidden behind certain frames. So ad blockers are things that will help you. Uh, sometimes there's, uh, they get creative with how they are serving ads. So you, it may not catch everything, but ad blockers are very, um, very key. All right then, uh, if that is... Maybe I can add just something in terms of ad blockers. So yes. to Robert, if you notice that you're getting more ads than you initially had, it's usually a good time to try and check one, is this, a, are these ads part of a particular software that you installed on your PC or phone? It's usually, it's usually one of those, something that you install that is now either adding more, more pop-ups, so to say, to your activity. If you notice that it's only within a particular software, you can uninstall it. But if you notice that it's actually even when you're using other, other software that does not necessarily have ads, for example, like WhatsApp and uh, additional software that does not pop up ads, they, it's usually a good point to, let's say, consider ad taking additional steps as indicated by Cynthia in terms of how you can mitigate or try to recover from a potential uh, breach because it could be an alert to something went wrong somewhere. All right, so Ping, back to you. Okay, so thank you. That brings us to the end of our session today. Maurice, thank you so much for that uh, addition um, to that conversation. It is true that some ads come due to accepting cookies on site. So we should be careful with that. Um, I think I, from the entire KPMG team that made this possible, thank you so much. Um, we look forward to engaging with you in other ways. And yeah, let's make sure our children are safe on the internet. Uh, we need to be really proactive given the things that are lacking out there. But thank you so much. Uh, we have had uh, an, a really great uh, interactive session. Thank you for making time and uh, see you uh, next time.